Bring it on. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Join your pizza salad. Um, today, uh, I'm going to talk about t-shirts and design. Uh, my name is Diane Hungar. For those who don't know me, um, <laughs> uh, I'm on the farm project here at Solution Street. I've been with Solution Street for about four, three and a half years, maybe. Like that. Um, I've had about professionally eight years of software development experience. Um, and a little background on why I chose user center design is uh, right now I'm taking my master's in information systems engineering management in Harrisburg University in Pennsylvania. And I took this course a couple semesters ago and I really enjoyed it. As a developer, even though it's about design, so coming involved, I really enjoyed it. And so I hope that I'll be able to, be able to share that knowledge with you today and that you'll also enjoy it. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> Never guys find yourself in this scenario, this situation. Like you're just pushing the door, open the door, and just won't open. Like you push harder and it won't open. And then you step back and you're like, oh, it's cool. Uh so silly. There's actually a name for that. These are called Norman doors. They have the John Norman, uh, and he wrote a book called The Design of Everyday Things. In this book, uh, he talks about normal things, everyday things in our lives. They're supposed to do something simple, but it turns out that it's not. Like, like that door, like uh, light switches. Do you use it? Okay, which, which light will turn on this room? How about this one? How about this one? Like, it will take you time to get confused with things. Figure out what you want to do. Like that shower, um, what do you call that? Shower uh, uh, handle knob, yeah. That's actually the first part for me. Five years ago, I came here to the US. And first time, I'm going to shower again, but I kind of, ooh, it's America. <laughs> <laughs> I turned out a sh handle, and there's no water. Screw America. Like, there's no water. <laughs> Oh, it's a user error. They just don't know how to use it. You know, 
we're going to that. I see a lot of back there. Like, yeah, the sense are like, these are errors, some are errors, whatever. But no, it's not their fault. In other words, I was, when I was like studying this course, there was like a big, um, my country is like, oh my God, I'm so guilty of that. I'm just, I always say that too. But, um, no, there's two sort of things that you have to be, you have to consider that when you do our design. And so, they, Today I'm going to talk about design design, but how we can improve the design to avoid human errors um, like that. So, quick overview, um, just a few definitions of terms. We're going to talk about design principles. Um, this is my favorite topic, human error. We're going to talk about that. Um, some design guidelines that we can use. Um, and then the use of user center design process. Okay. Okay, just a few First, I just want to differentiate usability, UX, criteria, and UCD. Um, first, usability, whether something is easy to use or you learn, what's that? For more, um, uh, better explanation, it's based on ISO 9241, it's the degree to which software can be used to specify consumers. Specify consumers. We have to take note of that. To achieve quantified objectives with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction, require context of use. So what I'm trying to say here is, for example, you have an app, and you want to test, you want to test its usability. If an uh, eight-year-old uses your phone, it doesn't mean that it's not usable. It has to be specified consumers, specified user who are um, eligible to use that online or that software. And then it should be in quantified context of use. The environment is, is important. For example, um, a device. If a device is not like, usable underwater, for example, it doesn't mean that it's not usable because it's supposed to be used not on water. So, usability has like a broader meaning, but like um, the idea is that there's certain factors that make something usable or not. Next is user uh, experience. It just refers to uh, the person's emotions and attitudes about using a particular product or system or service, or just the overall experience. You know, when you open your first iPhone, like, feeling very excited, like it's slowly opening, and then you drop it. <laughs> I was I'm sorry, right? Someone got this. And so, like, you're slowly, you're excited, it's very sweet. It's like the look and feel, of it, the feeling that you get. Uh, you're excited, um, it's very smooth. And then even the smell, that's part of your experience, how it's you know, you know that, that's part of the experience. And that, that's what UX is. And so if you call yourself a UX designer, you're a user experience designer. You design for that experience. Um, we were just, uh, that past thing we were like, in, our, in some roller coaster, some theme park. You know, if you're a UX designer, you design for the career. You design for the, um, the, 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 the fear, the fear that you get when you're up there, you know, it looks like it doesn't look safe, but you know, that's part of the experience. The designers design their own posters to look not safe, but really safe, right? So that is what a designer um, does for the experience of the user. And now user center design. Uh, it's seven methods or processes that puts the user in the center of the design and development process. And UCD makes the user experience better. So um, if you use user-centered design processes and methods, um, the goal is that the user is in the center of um, everything you do, that you design, your plan, the development. <coughs> the user is your focus. The user is what is important. And so um, when the user uses your product, then you know you have a better experience with that. So we use UCD to get a better. Okay. Right. So now we're going to talk about um, Don Norman. Um, he, he's a, uh, I mentioned him earlier, he wrote that book, which is our friends in our course. Um, he's a company <coughs> engineer, and he started this user centered design um, um, process that everyone's doing now. Um, and he has, um, in his book, he talks about the many principles. This is what I'm going to talk about, like, your eyes, your eyes think about it. Um, but before I try to read this, this package, 
Um, I do want to mention, when I told um, Joel and Jeff that at the beginning of the year, I want to do a tech session for a user center design. Um, Joel um, offered to introduce me to someone he knows who's a US, US expert. Um, his name's Bill Hillam. And I spoke to him on the phone, and he was, he was really nice. He even gave me, he even gave me some resources to, to help in my, in my slide, though. Thank to him for some parts of my slide. Um, but an important thing that he told me during our conversation is that design and development are two separate things, two separate um, processes, right? There's two separate kinds of um, uh, skills that are involved. And so a designer is not necessarily developer. And my audience right now are mostly developers, like maybe a couple that are not. So I'm not saying. So he would argue, Bill would argue that we, the developers, should be the designers. Right? We should not be the designers. We should not be the designers. No. Uh, sometimes we have some problems, whatever. We don't, we don't have a designer. Uh, but, uh, and so we should be able to use what we're going to learn from today to, uh, to use that on our, on our product. Uh, but really, that it should be that design is a different skill from development. Um, also, if you're a developer, you wouldn't want to design something that's going to be hard. For example, uh, okay, I want to make an app for um, this group of people, and then you say, okay, wait, um, I'm going to use I'm going to use JavaScript. That JavaScript um, doesn't do that. Um, it should be like this, that, or some limitation. It's okay, I'm just going to make a design to it. Like, no, that, that's not good. The developer should not be thinking of the implementation. I mean, okay, no, let me just say it again. The designer should not be thinking of the implementation. It should be just about the user. And so that's, that's why the designer should be different from the developer. Um, but that's not to say that whatever we learn here today um, will be useful for us uh, for our development. Okay. Um, oh, and like, a little house analogy that he told me. If you're going to build a house, you don't go as direct to your car, you go to an architect. You want someone who will design a house um, that is the same with development. You want a software architect to design the system or the product that you're going to do, fix the for the overall experience. Um, so those, those are very important to remember. All right, I'm going to go back to my podium here because I'm going to do something. So first, we're going to talk about uh, functional discoverability. Let me minimize it. Can I minimize this? Oh, no. OK. Uh, oh, there you go. Whoa. I lost it. All right. OK. So I'm talking too fast. Is everything OK? Let me take a here. Functional discoverability through obvious interactive elements and adequate feedback. Um, for software, or, okay, let's start with an object because that's how I started the presentation. Normal object, like what can you do with, uh, you know, the kids with the black on the heart, the, the square on the square hole and whatnot. Like you discover it yourself. Like where does this go? And then you know you think about um, how you can go about the object. It's the same with, with software, with systems. Uh, the user should be able to discover his ways around the software. He should be able to, okay, this is this looks like a button. I can click this. Okay, this one is blue. It's a link. Uh, it has an underline. Maybe it's a hyperlink, and you can click it. So, you know, simple things like that, the user should be able to discover um, the things that he can do. And then that there should be a feedback. Okay, clicking it, and then the, the link becomes purple. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The link becomes purple. But you've all clicked it. So there should be feedback to let the user know that their action did something right. So I'm going to show, um, let's expand this guy. Uh, this one is like a, not necessarily a bad example, but um, it's a bad example for a reason. Okay. So this is JQ Rolling's website. You'll see that um, there's a, some um, headers here for article you scroll down just so many things going on right and then you at first look you will think okay this is hyperlink I'll click that. okay this one's a hyperlink I'll click that too but without your mouse you wouldn't know that you can click 
this candle. If you click it, it directs you to her um, uh, nonprofit organization. Um, you click, I don't think this got, you can click this little cartoon here. This, this trash, this scratch, this paper. If you click that, it will go to rumors of her, her next book, First Child um, film. And so there's a play that's happening on this. There's a reason why it's not obvious. It doesn't seem discoverable at first, but because he want, uh, J.K. Rowling wants you to actually play around her website. So what I'm trying to say here is, as a designer, you have to think about um, if the discoverability is on purpose or like there's a really there's really a, a play that we wanted to to do as J.K. Rowling. Okay, let us go back to our slides. Very good. Next, design for the intended user. What about you? What about how the communication that you're going to use is about your user? And we design for the intended user through designing in their domain, through their experience. Look at this guy. This is just a type of accelerator UI, but what do you think a UI that looks like this is? What do you guys think? What's that? Is? Reading chart? Can you guys read the letter? Maybe the letter term. Right. Those are five schedules. Um, what do you think is the third element? Like, uh, is that the, the origin uh, city or airport? Um, San Francisco, I believe, was it? Yeah. And <laughs> San Diego, one of those. <laughs> and then the fifth column, that's the destination airport. That's um, London, Gatwick, and London, Heathrow. So that's, that's what those things are. Uh, and the other information, the flight information, um, the time, leaving, and the time arrival, local arrival, whatever. So, us who are not travel or airport people, this doesn't make sense to us. But for travel agents, this thing makes sense to them. This is the kind of UI that they want. They want to see everything in one page. They want to be able to do everything, find the slides, find what's delayed, do everything in one page, um, because that is their expertise. But for normal people, other people, we don't want that. We want something easier. From this time to this time, uh, I will know that this slide has arrived in this time. You know? So we want to um, design for our users who are System. And that's for this one, um, for the, the um, travel agents or, or uh, flight booking folks. Next, design for experience. Anybody in the practice with that? Do you guys have to use it? <laughs> I like to do. Very confused. One question at a time, you're focused in one, uh, on one question. You don't have to think about the facts, facts, forms, there. Effects 
of their actions. Um, these are just simple things like like icons. You know the trash the trash bin. As a user, a real trash bin is something you refer to. And so the uh, of, of, of uh, the trash can um, helps to give you an idea of the pretzel model of what your action is going to do. If you're going to throw it, it's like you're going to put it in the trash can. And if you're going to put it empty, it'll look empty, right? Um, and then the shopping cart in Amazon shopping cart doesn't look real as a, as a shopping cart, right? That, that's the goal of the time to say shopping cart, you know, grocery store. And then the same icon in these days, although I don't know if you folks, do you guys have guys ever seen this? I don't know what's that. <laughs> younger, younger folks, younger folks probably haven't seen a real discount. I don't know. But uh, in these days, and so that, that conversation, you know, about this, are they still timely? Are they still relatable to the users? Well, that depends on the users. Um, if you're software like Microsoft Word, it's like for a big pages. So um, this icon still is applicable uh, up to this case, even though oh yeah, I haven't seen Okay. <laughs> okay, next. Very good on my time. Design for error. This is my favorite. Um, as a designer. We want to expect eliminate uh, limit the impact of or compensate for errors. And we're going to talk about the different types of human errors. First type is the slip. Slip. This is the time. Uh, this is the common use the users encounter. It's a simple hand and eye coordination. Um, you got distracted. You were checking so fast, so you made a mistake. You know. Um, and, that, and that's a human thing to do, to, to experience. It's, it's normal that you're talking so fast um, and you, you touch the wrong button. That's okay. So when you're driving and you're in an intersection, and like you're focused on your driving, but at the same time, there's other things going on. And so you want to turn your left signal and accidentally turn your right on. You know what's going to happen to you? That's normal. This is a very human thing to, to, to experience. Um, and so that is all this is. And this thing, this is. Are unavoidable by design. Design can do anything with that. That's a human thing. And so, as a designer, we need to anticipate that kind of error. We um, need to be forgiving on that kind of error. For example, this, this is the screenshot of my, my keyboard here. Um, you see how the delete button is very close to the power button. When you're typing, accidentally click the power button. Does your computer turn off? Not necessarily. Because the Apple designers know what they're doing. They know that if you accidentally type it, um, it's not going to turn on the machine. You have to hold it, you have to press it before it turns off. Because they know they are preparing of that list that humans can make that mistake. Um, and then that same code to earn students to forgive you on when you change the time. You want to be forgiving on. on uh, on our design or, or this type of error. Um, another example, um, we were just talking about this yesterday, Mark. Um, you know, on an action menu, for delete, you can accidentally press delete, for example. There's always the are you sure dialog. That's a simple example of um, forgiving or being anticipating that a user can make that mistake of pressing the wrong button. Um, uh, a bad example would be, I don't have a, a you know, in a form uh, where you enter, there's many different boxes, you enter your name or whatever, and then the reset is right next to save, and you accidentally press reset, but everything's done. You know? And so that's a design flaw right there. You don't want, you want to make sure that the save is very obvious, maybe color it better, not, I mean, color it blue, make it obvious, make it easier for the user to press the save button. And the reset button. So that's, that's one example. Next type is the um, um, These are cost based consistencies for last of good use recall. Just simple forgetting the name. This is the type of human error where you just omit, omitted something. 
Um, you know when uh, I have I have three siblings. When my mom is mad at me and calls my name, she would call all my siblings' names first before my name. But then, Ramon, Christina, and then Diane. I'm like, okay, that's me. <laughs> like her, they just need to, you know, they. It, there's um there's some recall that has to happen, and that's just human. It's very um, it was a design kit for designers to get over to avoid that kind of black hair for humans. You still have checklists. For example, if you are, um, uh, this one, this one is like a creating your account, and you start with with this one. You get you get the tour. The next is you complete your profile, and next step is you upload your profile photo. And so you don't forget the important things that have to be involved in the whole workflow. Um, are are good tips to avoid this kind of error. Or like um, simple, I forgot to lock out, and then your system, you know, nowadays the system will automatically log you out, right? But if your system doesn't do that, you know, it's very normal for a person to forget to log out when I close the system. But that, that's the design we anticipate that kind of, of error. Next is the same. Um, this type of mistake, uh, this type of error, um, is caused by a lack of understanding or lack of business or correct information. Lack of training, just, you just don't know. Um, and this one is the worst kind of human error because this is usually undetected by the user. And this is the responsibility of the designer to make sure that your your product um, can do away with the mistakes that the user can do. For example, if you guys can read it, this is uh, a bank, uh, bank account, um, payment screen. Um, the person is going to make a, a payment. He's going to he's going to choose the type of account, checking your savings. Um, you select savings, type his information, press submit, and your account is not valid. The so people look at me. What do you mean it's not valid? You check each number, but that's the right number. What do you mean it's not valid? And it's to realize, wait a second, I didn't press saving. I chose checking because the radio button was on the right side of the work. And that's a design flaw. That's definitely for design. Because it's not obvious for the user which which account um is so that's that's one um bad example um of the state. One way to um Avoid mistakes. We're going to talk about different types, uh, different ways to um, uh, work on these types of human errors. Um, one is to act on your system. For example, this guy. Uh, for example, an uh, uh, airplane cockpit. You know, if, if you're a normal person and you sit there and you're like, well, so many buttons, so many things you can click. And as a normal person, you're con you're constrained by what the things you, by the things you can do. You don't know anything about it, and that's okay because a plane is supposed to be um, piloted only by a certified pilot. Normal persons who don't know anything about it um, should not be not be flying a plane. So they don't have they don't have um, user maybe they do. They don't have manuals that are easy for normal people to understand. It should be complex technique to avoid people. They're not supposed to pilot the plane to do that. Same with a uh, Tesla. I, I haven't proven this. I haven't been to Tesla. Maybe you don't have it. <laughs> um, you see the, the door, the door handle. It's like on on the uh, it's flat on it's flat on the door. If you're a normal person, a eh, normal person. If you're a uh, <laughs> if you're not the driver, if you don't have the keys, that that door won't open for you. The door handle won't be open for you. But if you have a key or the, the bob, whatever, and you go near to your door, then the, the handle will pop, pop up. Because that's the type of constraint that you want to make sure that other users who are not supposed to do, to do what they think they're doing um, uh, should not uh, be. What? <laughs> the users who are not supposed to be doing what they want to do um, should be kept from, from doing that. They should not be able to open the door because they don't have to. Okay. 
price. Now, there's many UI design uh, guidelines. Um, so this is for now moving towards the software, software part, uh, systems, um, user center design. Uh, also, these guidelines are like based off of um, everyday things. Uh, everyday things um, design principles as well. So um, I think we have plenty of time. We can go with them one by one, um, but we can also choose some of them. So we can. Okay, let's go for number one. Strive for consistency. Um, for UI colors, even simple colors, terminology. The only consistent. Do you use user? Do you use client? Like we want to make sure we're consistent with the terminology. Um, and the other visual things on your system. Uh, so, so that the user um, knows that everything that they're doing you know, they, um, is, is, is still part of the system. It's something, oh, that looks different, but did I just say something wrong? No, everything has to be consistent. Enable frequent users to use shortcuts. Simple keyboard shortcuts. Um, that's very much the same with. Or not you know, like related to the number eight here, reduce short term memory load. Um you just, but I have like uh, the exact number here. Um the limitation of human information processing um to the limit, you can only remember up to five pages. So you know with your phone, um there's like four or five yeah, I can show that. Four things on the what do you what do you call this again? Like the main main items that you can do. Navigator. Navigator, yeah. Yeah, the, the here at the bottom. Because users can only remember up to five, I mean, humans can only remember up to five objects in their short term memory. And so, like, where did I put my, where is my, my, uh, my Safari icon? Like, you can just immediately find it there because you remember that it's down there. But if it, if you have like 10, 10 on your navigator, it's like, um, okay, which one is that again? So it's easier to remember. Um, you have to remember if you only have up to five objects on your on your navigator bar here on your phone. Um, next, important feedback. Now we talked about this. When you click something, you get you get a, you get a feedback of the action that you just did to confirm that um, what you did is correct. Um, there's also error messages. Error messages are important too. You want to make sure we don't give computer word computer language error messages. You Fatal error, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You're just like, oh my god, what did I just do? You know? You want to make sure that the user, like, you've been gentle with your error messages. Okay, you can't do that because you're missing this and that. Uh, you can just be fatal error, warning, no, warning is okay, fatal error, uh, terminated. There you go. The system will terminate it. Like, it's like, oh my god. You just, you just don't want to use that again. That reminds me of number six here. Permit, permit easy reversal of action. Um, the undo, that's very important. You want to make sure that your users can undo their action. Um, for this class, I was studying, um, we were supposed to study an app or like a, a website or whatever, and I chose Wave. I want to study the UI of Wave. When I was playing with this, and you know where you can report a uh, traffic accident, you can report there's a police nearby or whatever. I reported that there's a road closure near my house, and like there's a bad user event. I can't find a way to remove it. I'm like, <laughs> now I just made seven, oh, well, however many people, these because I can't remove the accident that I reported. It's not, I don't know if there's, a, if there's actually a way to do it. I don't know. I didn't figure it out, but I can remove the action that I just did. And so, that was the last day I used to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> yeah, hard for a lot. Exactly. And that's what you need to feel. You want to make sure that your user, that it's okay that your users are using your system. Um, you want to be, make sure, number seven, that your user, uh, that your system supports internal locus of control. They are in control of the software. They are not just the uh, responders. You show this message, okay, they click back, and then like you just do everything from them. They want to 
do the action. They want to initiate. That's what that's a human thing to do. Um, what else, guys? Um, design dialogue to yield closure. Um, you know that uh, 175% completion. 100% completion. There's like there's like a flow up to up to a completion of a workflow that you're trying to do. Um, it's just not. It's uh, it's not just you're done and then you're like, ah, uh, okay, was that was that long? Did I just completely? Yay! Up, check. You created your account successfully. Created right now. You want to make sure the closure for that workflow is done. Because you, as always, user-centered design is about your user, what they're feeling, what they're experiencing. That's that's the focus of the user-centered design. Um. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about uh, the user-centered design process, the design thinking process. Um. So it starts with with observation. Don Norman, when he wrote his book, he was in London. And he was just observing things. He noticed like that the faucets, the doors. He knows he wrote them all um, in a book. Because and he just kept observing. Why is this doing this? Why can't I figure this thing out? Why it's supposed to just do one thing? It's supposed to open or close for you, but you just you can not that easy. So it's always about observation. As a designer, you want to observe your your users. Um, be with them. With what everyday tasks that they do, you want to observe that, and that is why they say designers are different from developers because you know developers are always with the actual users. Um, there's also a difference with um, the marketing people who developers or marketing or product owners that who developers talk to, and that's the actual user. When you demo your product to to the marketing people, it's, yeah. Do this. It can do this. It's like awesome. So many features. But the user really just wants this thing. You know, it's 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 the simple thing. There's a difference between um, making your product so commercialized and like what the actual what the user actually needs. And so we want to make sure that we we observe what do you need. What is the problem? Uh, what information do I need to clearly define the problem? Those are the types of questions to help you um, observe. I uh, remember also in this class, um, one of our topics was to create an app for students in the university to help them, for new students to help them go around the university. Right? So it's like an app where, where can I find the library? Where can I find the general? Where can I find my special? Things like that. And so we start with a problem statement. And my team, my, my group, we wrote our problem statement and it says, um, to write an app that will help new students around the university, the Hackers University. And we submitted it, the professor wrote a big X on the first three to write that app. Four words of our problem statement. Our goal, our problem statement, is not to write an app. Our goal is to not um, write a system. We're not, not trying to talk with for users. Our goal, our the problem statement should be on the first person point of view, as a student, as a new student, I want to go around first. I want to be able to find the library. I want to be able to find where the category. I want to find my subject for the day. And those are the kinds of problems that you want to focus on. Your goal. Your, your, your focus is not how oh, I'm going to do space JavaScript, like this technology. But think about that. It's not about you. It's about the user. How it's, it's not even about that. Maybe they don't need that. Maybe they just need to piece of paper. Right, it's like you get everything they need. Um, but that's that's what um, observation is. Next is um, empathy. Uh, what can I learn about the user? What can I learn about what they need? Same. When you observe them, you empathize with um, the things that they do. Empathize their feeling. How am I? Uh, what can I learn about the user? What can I learn about me? Um, next is visualizing. How do I generate say, some ideas? What are some potential solutions? You visualize already. Um, based on that problem, based on like, the user's experience, visualize how you're going to design the software or the product that you want to do for your users. And then you create a prototype. Um, there's 
low fidelity and high fidelity computer center design. Um, low fidelity is just all paper. You draw everything, you scribble, you scrap, you do sketch. Um, you use uh, dark glass tons of pages every day, different colors, different markers, different kinds of papers. It's all all the I really showed us last week. You draw everything, whatever in your mind. Um, we had an activity. Okay, draw, draw a clothespin. Okay, we can draw a clothespin. Draw a smartwatch. I don't know, wait, it's a watch that has to be smart. How can you draw a smart? It's where? This is a watch about it. No, this is a smart watch for a round. But you can't, you, you want to, um, you want to relate what you want to show. But you want to be able to relate what you want in your, what's in your mind, what's in your mind. Um, through your drawing. So how, how do you draw a smartwatch? How do you draw love? Right. How do you draw, <laughs> how do you draw, draw <coughs> And like that kind of thing, do that every day. Practice all our um, concepts or actions. We, we need to be able to improve that in ourselves. So that we'll be able to put on paper, put it aside, put it and, and eventually a software, what we put um, the user to experience on your, on your app, on your product. And um, there's testing and refining. You test if, without committing any code. You're already testing your design. Um, uh, picture, uh, like, I believe I have PowerPoint. Let me jump to this. It's an example of testing your prototype. They just made a paper. You know, you're not writing any code yet. But you're testing it. Um, see if your user will like it, will enjoy the experience. Um, it's a task. Um, okay, what am I going to do? This this right here is a button. If I press it, and then the tester will click the next page, next paper, this is the next thing you're going to do. Right? And you do it all on paper. And why on paper? It's easier, it's faster, faster turnover. Here it is, ah, now this button doesn't look right, change that. You put this, put that in. If you're doing this already, like with soft prototyping tools like Balsamic, you that. Um, Okay, I'm going to drag this here with position it properly and you know, make this the size like this. It's, it takes time if you use software tools. Um, and paper is always the first low fidelity prototype, it's always the first step for you for when you're designing um, your system or your software. Okay. Um, there's also called um, A B testing as part of, of the testing phase. Of the, of the UCD process. AB testing, you're testing A and B. This one, this kind of test, you're doing it in production. Um, I don't have an example because I, I can never test it, but Bing.com, they used to test their, their search icon or their go icon. Is it the word search button or is it the magnifying button? Search button. And so um, different different types of people would catch the magnifying, different types of people would type the word search. Would find the search button. Whichever draws more users, whichever um, button makes users click more, that is the button that they want to go for. So if you're designing an app, designing a software, and like you just can't decide between, between these two, is it do I use the button or like other things, you can do that with your users. Do an A B testing in production so that live users can actually test it. Or like like just your um, early adopter testers, see which one they prefer more, see which one they can click more, and then on your final product, that is, that is the um, element that you're using. Okay. Let's just look at the activity by game. I'm going to need volunteers. For example, Francis.
Wait, you're going to need to draw. So you can sit on a table or find, find a place <laughs> where you can sit on a table. Oh, there's a bed. Of course, it's just a bed. You can sit by a table. <laughs> okay. Uh, is anybody else? I'm going to sit. I'm going to send here. So we're going to do, we're going to sketch a visual narrative. Okay, a narrative. Draw, I mean, narrate through your drawing how to make breakfast.
fridge not that long ago. But you got the fridge here, go to the fridge, yeah. have some eggs, juice, bacon, um, cook it on the stove, and got your rice bowl. Testing the 
the paper after you paper prototype, after you test it, after you get feedback from your users, now it's time to actually use the software, put it for your development design. This is their work and this is their blueprint now to start implementing what the designers um, have, have done. You know, um, and not using paper anymore, we use actual um, elements on the on So, we're done. Um, so, I find slides with like a silly door, a normal door where you can enter. This is what an ideal door should look like. The door should, if you want to push it, it should just be a flat panel or something like this, this crash bar. When you enter it, just push it. Um, and when, you, when the door has to be pulled, it should be a handle. That's what a good design of the door is. Um, for the gas point earlier, instead of a straight, instead of a straight um, a set of knobs. It's like positions you ma you're able to have it. It's like this one right here, upper left. Oh, sorry for my phone. Uh, it's knobs point on, on the upper left. Um, that's, that's how you design everything. Floor plan, structure of your life. You know that this button will turn on the living room. Do you know that this button will turn on or off the, the guest room or whatever? So these are the kinds of designs where they're actually thinking of their users. That was good. When you get home, it's your life like an external current and everything. And guess which one? Yeah, so if you want to get all that, if you really want that one. Um, and so this last slide, slide I'm one bit late. Um, this is just a big 15 seconds, so it's quick. My, what I, this is um, Apple's iPad 3 introduction video. Just the first 15 seconds. There's more to it, but we don't need to watch that. Um, it's important that, for example, for a door, it's important for you to achieve as a user, as humans, it's important for you to achieve your goal, not knowing that there was actually a door. You just went through it. Uh, like the, the 
things that you like, things that you don't like, that you want to accomplish in a day, things that you'll accomplish maybe later in the day or whatever. Um, just be empathize to them, be their shoes. Um, and that's how I, being in that scenario where you, you're not the designer, you're not like, I think that's how you can do that. <laughs> Like you were saying that the designer shouldn't think about the limitations of mm -hmm. technology, but we have to. Yeah. So when we have to pass the feedback to a designer or a product manager and say, we can't do that, yeah. how do we compromise that? Right, right. So what, I'm, what I was trying to say is not think about like, the impossible things. Make sure that this app will make, can make you fly, self-work, or whatever. Not impossible things. A designer, um, like software architects, you know, usually their background is already in development. Um, they have, it's important that they know um, of technology, they know software, they know the implementation part. Uh, architects, like in a big house, they know that feel, uh, they know feel that uh, there is a system of a seal, there is a system of a or whatever. They have to be knowledgeable as well. Not, not just like, don't think about it, but like it's the last. What the user wants is like the implementation is like the last, very last of your thinking. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Not like totally forget about the implementation. Uh, how do you balance kind of the user centered design and like both with habit and also you can build like the TV show at the end? Well, it's user centered and intuitive the first time you're in the house. You learn to turn off the lights and you can fly. Something you can do with like smacking the wall. <laughs> <laughs> just have it on in like if you have a handle. Which is clearly not user centered, but none of us are going to. Most people don't switch to something right. more user centered. Yeah. Because it doesn't make any sense. Uh -huh. um, with, with good design, it's important to remember that. For a first time user, so on our job stories, we have one scenario for first time user, one scenario for an expert user, assistant, one scenario for an edge case user. Like this person really has a weird edge case position with. Um, and so there's, it's, a, if it's, it's okay if your system or your product is kind of not easy to remember for a first time user, but for subsequent use, they remember, and that is with design. If after some secret use and your user can still figure out how to go with your software, then that definitely has not happened. So habits, that's okay. If if a looking switch like um and then uh, is there and you eventually develop a habit for it, um that's okay. That's that's good as that you eventually remember it and how to use it. But if you still get it after so many tries, then that's well that's a poor important time. Yeah? I just comment the book that I had mentioned at the beginning, uh, if you look around here, is most is available on the current website. It's a really good reading. Which book? Yeah, so kind of everything. Yep. This guy. Yep. Uh, All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah.